The LA Lakers still have a season to play. More than likely, they're going to be in the play-in tournament. They're going to have a tough road through the playoffs. But I've also started thinking about their offseason, what trades they could make, how they could continue to improve this roster, try and be a competitor and a contender around LeBron next year. But then I started thinking, what if LeBron just retires this offseason? With so much basketball going on right now, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Prize Fix. I've got a special offer for you in the description as well. You can click the link and use code SPORTING for a 100% deposit match up to $100 on Prize Picks. Now, if you've never done Prize Picks before, essentially you go on to the site and you pick more or less for each of these numbers. It is you against the numbers and you put together a selection of between two and six of these numbers. And if you get them correct, you win some cash. Now, of course, there's some other variables involved here. You can get some of these demon and goblin numbers as well. There's red squares and there's green squares. The red are more difficult to get, but they increase your payout, whereas the green are easier to get, but don't quite give you as much of a payout. You can mix and match some of those to try and make sure you have the best selection possible. If you feel like you have a decent idea of what might happen on a given night, whether it be in the tournament right now or in the NBA as well. And again, you have that link in the description for a 100% deposit match up to $100 to get you started right now in price picks. And like I said, this is a fantastic time to get started. So much basketball going on. We got the NBA playoffs coming up as well. And price picks is just a fun way to add to your viewing experience. So go ahead and check out price picks, put together your selection, click that link in the description for that special offer as well. And thank you again to price picks for sponsoring this video. Now on the surface, that seems kind of crazy, right? I mean, he's still a really, really good player putting up a ton of stats. He's going to continue to add to his statistical resume, even if over the next couple of seasons, if he does continue to play, the Lakers aren't contenders he's still gonna be able to add to his resume which is something that we all know he very clearly cares about he's also talked for a while about the fact that he feels like he can still play and he wants to play with his son and he wants to continue to to try and compete and win titles but there's a couple of problems here right I mean for one the idea of playing with Bronny feels pretty far-fetched at this point certainly next year at least unless he just decides to go to the league anyway and then he gets picked up by you know a G League team or something of course that would you know probably be the team that LeBron would want to go to the kid could maybe go and, and play with the Lakers G League team or something like that but in in terms of like this concept that we had a year ago, of maybe Bronny is going to be a lottery pick or a first round pick and then him and his dad can play together on the Lakers. That concept feels pretty far fetched now. And also the idea of the Lakers as contenders over the next couple of seasons in comparison to teams like Oklahoma City, like Denver, like those teams that are going to continue to improve. It feels pretty far fetched as well for the Lakers to think that they're going to be, you know, a, a true top tier contender. They're going to be, you know, maybe in the mix kind of like they are this year, but not necessarily a top tier contender. And if you're if you're LeBron, you're looking around, you have ideas about about what you want to do once you do retire, whether that be owning a team, whether it be getting into media, whatever the case may be. What if he just decides, you know what, awesome career, I'm done. What does that mean for the Lakers? How are they supposed to navigate that situation? Because LeBron in general, whether he retires or not, is a free agent this offseason, or at least he can opt out and become one, which he's expected to. Um, and right now, the expectation, he's going to opt out and try and get a, a, you know, a two or three year max deal from somewhere. Obviously, the Lakers would love to retain him. But the concept of him just not being on the team next year isn't that crazy, whether it be in free agency or in this case, potentially retiring. And if that does happen for the Lakers, it puts them in a really interesting situation because they've kind of, you know, been on this line of trying to compete in the moment because they have LeBron, but also not giving away all these future assets, right? They've actually set themselves up reasonably well for the future. Of course, they still have Anthony Davis, who when healthy is still one of the better front court players in the entire league. Austin Reeves is a good guard for them. D'Lo has been pretty good for them this year. They have some future picks and assets as well. And I would just be really interested to see what their plan would be in an offseason in which LeBron is no longer on the team because presumably they would continue to try and be good, right? I mean, you still have Anthony Davis on the roster. There's no way you're just going to completely bottom out. But without LeBron, are they truly going to be, you know, a, a, a for sure playoff team? Probably not because even with LeBron, they're not a for sure uh, playoff team at the moment. And there's a couple of different directions they could go in. I mean, they could kind of just take the year and, and try and build some assets and, you know, win like 45 games maybe and then go into the following year potentially with some some cap space and some, some uh, ability to add stars and, and maybe make some moves there and, and go back into kind of the star hunting uh, territory they've been in over the last couple of seasons. Or, I mean, they could look to trade Anthony Davis. That, that, that's absolutely a possibility for them. If they view this as kind of the end of the era in LA, they got the title when they did and, and now LeBron is gone and maybe it's just time to get some value out of Anthony Davis. I, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised. I know this seems crazy. I know this seems far-fetched, but in this moment, like not knowing what's going to happen with LeBron and then how that could impact the rest of the roster, Anthony Davis being available for trade this off season or the following is not crazy to me because there's just so much up in the air with this Lakers roster. Now, given all of that, there are also plenty of reasons why LeBron wouldn't retire, right? I mean, we talked about the statistical, you know, output. He's just going to continue to be able to have, I think it's clear at this point that even as he ages, he's still going to be at average, you know, 20 a game and continue to add to his statistical resume 
Um, also, you, we can't discount the fact that he's still going to make a ton of money, right? Like if he, let's say he opts out and signs a two-year deal worth $100 million. I mean, that's not a small amount of money. And this is a guy that wants to own an NBA team when he gets out of the league. And of course, he's, you know, got a, a, a ton of money and, and, and all this stuff. But you can't discount the fact that another NBA contract is something that would be a pretty significant part of the equation here. And it's not, a, there's, it's not like there's a 0% chance that he would be able to eventually play alongside Ronnie, whether it be next year or the year after. And that's clearly been a goal of his and a dream of his. And it would be a pretty big, uh, you know, turnaround for him to then just kind of give up on that idea. And whether it be, in, you know, with him in the G League next year, the following, it is still at least a bit of a possibility for him. And that would not be a possibility at all, of course, if he did go ahead and retire. And of course, a lot of this depends on how the Lakers look in the postseason, because even in years like this one, where uh, they don't have a great regular season, they've they've still managed to put together good postseason runs. I mean, you look at last year, they weren't a great regular season team, and they were able to make the conference finals. And if they're kind of still in that kind of territory, uh, this off, or excuse me, this postseason, even in a loaded Western Conference, obviously, it's more difficult for LeBron to just walk away when it still kind of feels like they have an outside chance of making the conference finals, even in a loaded West. Um, but if, you know, let's say they lose in the play-in game, right? Or, or they lose in the first round. It, it becomes easier and easier, I think, for LeBron to look at the situation, just realize that he could continue to come back. But at least with the Lakers, um, the idea of true championship contention feels pretty far away. Now, obviously, he could always, you know, return and then they have some opportunities to bring in potentially a star in the offseason. There's been rumors about Trey Young. I've talked about that um, in some other videos in terms of what their offseason could look like. But even if they were to add, you know, like a star guard, let's say to this team, the West is so good. And there's so many teams that have more assets than the Lakers and are better than them right now and are younger than them right now and continue to get better. And I know that, you know, LeBron's probably not going to think of it that way. He's probably still going to think that the Lakers have a chance to win a title. But realistically, it's very hard to see them truly compete over the next couple of seasons, um, even if he does return. The other possibility here, of course, is him leaving just straight up in free agency, which presents the same issue for the Lakers that LeBron just retiring does. And basically the point of this is not having any idea what is going to happen to, you know, I, I was going to say your best player, but I mean, AD has been better when he's been healthy. So one of your best players, right? Not having any idea what's going to happen with that guy, whether he's going to retire, whether he's going to go somewhere else, what kind of demands he's going to make in the off season in terms of roster construction. It's a really difficult situation for the Lakers to be in and one that's going to be tough for them to to continue to try and navigate. And at the end of the day, I mean, I've advocated for this in the past. I don't think it would be the worst thing if they did kind of, uh, you know, start to move out of the LeBron era a little bit and then maybe look at trading Anthony Davis. This is a franchise that is continually invested in in the present and in the immediate future uh, of the team. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to start looking at things in a little bit more of a long-term lens. Uh, I think they've started to do that, uh, not necessarily just giving in to what LeBron wants all the time in terms of roster moves in the middle of the year. I think we saw that at the deadline this year. Um, and I don't even know kind of what the trade value market would be for someone like Anthony Davis at this point in his career, given some of the durability issues, but they would they would be able to get a ton if they wanted to. And obviously the idea right now when the season's not even over of LeBron either retiring or go, going somewhere else and then Anthony Davis getting traded and what that roster would look like for the Lakers. Um, that idea seems pretty crazy right now, but I, I don't think it's completely out of the realm of possibility within the next, you know, four or five months or, you know, 18 to 19 months. Now, at the end of the day, realistically, LeBron probably isn't going to retire. He's talked about this publicly in the past about, oh, he, you know, who knows, maybe I might not come back. And then he, you know, he always comes back. Uh, but it is just something interesting to think about. They could go on a postseason run. AD could be really good next year. They could be a top four seed in the West. Like everything is still on the table for this team. They could bring in a star in the offseason that makes a huge difference. But really starting to think about, you know, kind of what the post LeBron era in the NBA is going to look like. There's a ton of young players that are going to continue to kind of carry that mantle. And, and the league is incredibly talented right now. I don't think that necessarily is going to be an issue. But from a roster building standpoint, um, it's really tough to have this big of a question mark surrounding LeBron and something that we're not going to have an answer to uh, for a while. And again, I think a lot of it depends on what happens in the postseason this year. And it's one of the reasons why the Lakers are, are such an interesting playoff team this year.